Whoa, out of the sea. Oh, that's lovely. And the twisty bit, oh, it just changes direction. Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome back to another Ducati ride. So I've been at Ducati UK all day, they've got a media day, I've been riding all sorts of different models and in this video I'm going to be retesting the Ducati Street Fighter V4S. Now for 2023 there's been a few updates on this bike, small evolutions, it's had some electronic subtleties done to it, swinging arm position has been changed slightly, mainly to make it a better bike on track but also better on the road. So if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cup of tea, make yourself comfortable and chop seat, roll the intro. So for 2023, there's been some updates to the Street Fighter. Updates which I'm really interested in trying because I have been a little bit critical of this bike in the past. I borrowed it, not last year, year before. I borrowed the version where they'd made the changes to the mapping. There were some updates to it from its original years. I think it's the second generation version I borrowed before. Lovely bike, don't get me wrong, fantastic, but I found the, the engine braking a bit too hard on it and it was, you know, to ride slowly it was a little bit difficult, a little bit hard work. So I'm really interested to see, for this year, apparently there's been a fair few changes around the electronics, um, the swinging arm position has been adjusted, there are lots of other little small updates to make it better on track first of all because this bike is a, an amazing track machine god doesn't it sound good but also to make it a better road bike and that's why I've got it in road mode because I really want to see if this is a bike I could you know if I could live with because I love the look of this machine absolutely love the look of this bike and of course one of the other sort of criticisms with this machine was the, uh, you know, only had, I think it was a 17 litre fuel tank. And obviously being a V4, we all know, you know, they're, they're a little bit more thirsty. So you'd, you'd only get about 100 miles out of the bike with the, with the old fuel tank, but there's another litre of fuel in this. And there's also got the new mapping whereby the, the two cylinders at the back shut down when they're not in use, when you're just pooling along. I think if you're under, 3,000 revs or 4,000 revs the rear cylinder shut down to save fuel you know and heat as well so uh, yeah I'll be really interested to see what this is like at the moment I'm in road mode and apparently there's been a fair few changes to the road mode you know obviously this bike's got the full Olin's EC2 suspension so as you go through the modes it obviously you know changes all the suspension as well as the engine characteristics but I can see engine braking is on two and there is still a bit of a, you know, as you come off the throttle, you know, quite a lot of engine braking. So I'm going to have a little play. It's all adjustable. I'm going to have a little play and see if we can just mess with the engine braking. Yeah, I think, I think that's more engine braking. Sorry, this isn't very exciting on a V4S Street Fighter, just messing with the engine braking. <laughs> But these are the things which matter if you're living with a bike. Now, engine braking three, yeah, that, that's, that's less engine braking now. That may make it a little bit easier to live with because I have spent a good couple of weeks on this bike. When you're living with a bike, you know, if you go on an hour's test ride, you're going to love this thing. You're going to absolutely love it. But it's when you're actually living with a bike that things like engine braking, throttle response, smoothness, trying to live with that is what can be difficult. I mean, it's, it's a big V4 engine out of the Panigale. You know, it's, it's never gonna be the, uh, as smooth as a straight four. You know, it's always, it's always gonna be some compromises, you know, with a, with a thoroughbred V4 like this, a 208 horsepower V4 motor. You're going to have a few to live with, a few small compromises, I think. 
But I must say, with that engine braking in three, with the other changes, that seems like an easier bike to live with around town anyway. <sighs> boring, boring shit. Coming out of boring shit. See? It's just there waiting to go. Absolutely rampant. Blipper is super smooth. <laughs> this bike has this, the whole crank is counter rotating, so the engine is spinning in the opposite direction to the wheels. And this is sort of a, I guess, a bit of a criticism of this bike in the past. You know, for a 208 horsepower naked machine, you would expect it to be a real handful. You know, really flighty, the wheel coming up. But because of that counter-rotating engine, and I don't know if this bike is very long or... <laughs> but this thing is just glued. To the tarmac it's incredible how stable and capable this bike is and it's almost too stable too capable too easy that it takes a little bit of something away from it but we're in the road mode i'm going to bang it into the sport in a minute and see if it wakes up a little bit more but it's yeah that front wheel is sort of glued to the road i mean it's not really a criticism is it i mean it's it's a fantastic body electronics package the dynamics of this thing are just so good it's almost made it a little bit too easy which is uh it's a strange criticism oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah Right, let's have a little bang into, uh, let's change the mode. That's the trip. I've got to remember how you change the mode now. I, mean, I do find these buttons here a little bit fiddly on this. With my big fat fingers. Sport mode, close throttle. This is now sport, so all the suspension will firm up. Throttle response will be changed. Yeah, engine braking still feels nice. And when you change between the modes on this bike, obviously all of the settings, like the traction control, the engine braking, the engine response, the suspension, are all adjusted through the modes. And what is really good, you can then go in and you can customise that to your heart's content. You know, you've got full flexibility of all the electronics in here to do exactly what you want. Even in the sport mode, suspension still feels very plush. You've also got the race mode as well. So there is one above sport, full on race mode. Ergonomics being six foot two, it's, it's a really comfortable place to be. It's quite surprising you're not sort of cantered forward a little bit more. You're quite upright on this. It's got a really wide bar. You know, you've got quite a lot of weight on your, on your bum. You know, it's not like the, uh, S1000R, where you're sort of forward a bit, where you've got those flat bars. Same with the Super Duke, it's more of an aggressive riding position. This is... <laughs> this is more sort of laid back, I'd say. Sort of comfortable cruiser. The seat feels nicely padded, but it's not massively wide, the seat. I wonder, we'll see how we're getting on towards the end of the ride, but it's not massively wide. But you've got quite a lot of room back and forward. Oh, the front brakes are so beautiful. So much feel. Full Brembo setup. Yeah, oh, they're incredible. Really, really nice front brake. Same with the rear is quite nice as well. Quick shifter blipper, I think, is one of the best. So beautiful. Twisty bit. Oh, it just changes direction. <laughs> so fast. So fast to flip flop left to right. This is better than I remember it. This is much better than I remember it. In the sport mode, 
everything, I can tell everything's firmer. <laughs> I could feel the texture of the tarmac, you know, nothing's dulled. Hello? There's a few tanks. Tank anybody? Woo! Oh yeah, it's nice. Definitely, definitely a bit torture, a bit firmer. But even in the road mode, it's still incredible. I'm wondering if it's worth popping it, just popping it into race. I think in the, I think, well it used to be, in the sport mode, anything other than race, you had restricted power or torque in the first three gears. But if you went in race, you had the full power in every gear, so uh, I guess it would be rude not to try the race mode. Race mode. The dashboard is new for this year, and look, as soon as I've gone into race, look how it's transformed. I've now got all separate listed aids, which I think flash as you go, as they start to be used. <laughs> Massive gear, gear indicator as well. Look at that. that, that's a layout, isn't it? Look, that's a layout. This bike makes you feel like an absolute hero. It's so capable, I think it really complements the rider really compliments the ride, you know, gives you great feedback but keeps everything under control and I don't think in a way no other bike does. There's not another motorcycle with 200 horsepower that feels so in check as one of these, you know, and just smooths out the road, smooths out everything and you end up going faster and faster on this bike. surface is a bit shit. Ah. Woo! Yep, it's quick. <laughs> oh, get away and change direction. wee -ha. Oh, even at higher speed, the speed at which it changes direction. Let's tighten it up. Oh, it just gives you so much confidence, this bike. I've never known a bike like it. And even on these terrible surfaces in race mode, with the suspension firm, it gives you such confidence. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, it's, it's incredible. What a thing. What a thing. I take it all back, Street Fighter. I take it all back, my criticisms of you. You're now, I think, the complete package. Woo! Now, I don't know how much this video is going to be YouTubable. <laughs> it's just a nice, gentle cruise for the countryside, honestly. Officer, Your Honour. God. Uh, what else to tell you? So the dash is new, like it, like what they've done with the dashboard. I think it's a tiny bit bigger, really like that race mode. That is fantastic. I think I'm going to have to take this bike on track. I'm going to have to speak to Ducati to see if I can take this on a track day. Because I'm so impressed with its road manners that, uh, yeah, I know it's going to be fantastic on track, but they fixed the things which mattered to me. It was the road manners I didn't like. Yeah, it's still going to be thirsty. You know, you're still probably going to be only pushing 110, 120 miles on the tank. They're even ridden relatively sensible. But, you know, if you can live with all that, everything else with this bike now, I think it's taken them a few years to get this 
right. And this is the first one I've ridden where I think they've actually got it. They've got it right. It could still be a little bit more engaging. It, it could perhaps still be a little bit too good. You know, it could be a little bit too in control. You know, you've got to be proper pushing to, you know, really be appreciating and feeling like you're going fast. So I think this will be a bike which will be very difficult to, to keep to legal limits on because of that. But it's very good. But oh, I think I can manage it. I think I can live with it. the way the suspension copes with the tarmac you know this is owning ZC2 and in the past this used to be you know a very firm system even in the comfortable settings it used to be very firm now this is in race mode and the amount of support and the bump management uh, is so plush and like I'm 20 stone rider you know, I'm not, and these roads are pretty appalling and still, it's beautiful. And I could still feel what's going on beneath the bike. Hey! The paths do, do get flighty on a bumpy road like this. They do start to get a bit flighty. But it is just so stable, it's really quite incredible. Oh yeah. I don't know how we've left them, we're only pooling along. What do you reckon? Like it. All in love. <laughs> 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 the yeah, to forget them. You might as well take them off. You want one? Here we have an English biker Dan doing his little little walk around. But here's the uh, I prefer this colour. The red's great. If it's your first Ducati. Of course you've got to get a red one, but I'm really liking this black and grey, which is sort of new for 2023. And, you know, there's no denying it's an incredible looking machine. You know, absolutely incredible looking machine, these. You know, every, every bit of being you can imagine. Full Olin ZC2, you've got Brembo clutch and brake master cylinders. Oh, you know, it's just uh, Marchesini wheels. You know, it's just... Uh, an amazing, uh, amazing looking bit of kit. Yeah, that sounds nice. I can do that. So there we go, we've done a bit of guffage, photos, flybys. No problem with heat on this. I mean, it's been sat idling while we're waiting for people to go, you know, we've at least been 20 minutes back and forth, sat with the bike running, off again. It's not felt any heat from this. The Panigale, different story. <laughs> That's definitely starting to get warm. But even like the tank, I can't feel the, the tank getting warm. There's a little bit of heat through the seat, tiny little bit. But it's perfectly acceptable. So I've now turned off the wheelie control. Just because. And it's good because it remembers, you know, when you turn the bike on and off, I've got it in sport mode. Wheelie control off in sport mode. So whenever I go into sport mode, the wheelie control's off. Because it remembers all those settings. It's, um, yeah, it's... You know, I, think the, I think it's... Safe to say, the electronics package on this bike is one of, or if not, the best package available. You know, it's that good. It's that incredible. But for this year, you know, this is just such a complete package. I mean, it wants to be, because I think this for the V4S is pushing now 25 grand-ish, I'm guessing. I put it on the screen. 24 I mean it's a lot of money it is a lot of money but it is one hell of a motorcycle 
I think what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to do a comparison between this and the Tuono. Battle of the V4 Nakeds. And then maybe if we can, the uh, Yamaha MT10 SP, the wannabe V4. And put them all head to head, me and Greg, see which one we think is best. Because before I wouldn't have put this in a, in a group test like that because you know, I found too many compromises with it, with the fuel range and the, the on and off throttle response. But now they've improved those things. So I think it's fair to put that into the ultimate naked V4 shootout. So if you like the sound of that, hit that subscribe button, press that like button, and I'll see you in the next one, guys.